Every U.S. president elected in the 1840s died unexpectedly. Two of them in office and one immediately after leaving. William Henry Harrison passed away just one month after entering the White House. As the story goes, Harrison caught a cold while delivering his exceptionally long inauguration speech on a cold, wet day in early March. That cold turned into pneumonia and took the president's life. But researchers re-examined the journal of Harrison's physician, Dr. Thomas Miller, and found that his symptoms were really more indicative of typhoid fever. Miller even voiced doubts of his own diagnosis, saying, quote, the term pneumonia afforded a succinct and intelligible answer to the innumerable questions as to the nature of the attack. Although Harrison did have a fever and trouble breathing intermittently throughout the illness, the more constant and severe symptoms were constipation and abdominal distension. Harrison also had a history of indigestion. At the time, this was typically treated with carbonated alkali, which neutralizes the gastric acid that kills off bacterial pathogens. This may have made Harrison more vulnerable to intestinal infection. And this conclusion is in line with other presidential ailments of the decade. Both James Polk and Zachary Taylor developed gastroenteritis while in the White House. Taylor's case, like Harrison's, proved deadly, while Polk recovered briefly but died of cholera just three months later. So what killed these three presidents? It was most likely the White House's drinking water. D.C., like most places in the mid-19th century, didn't yet have a modern sewer system. The White House received its water from a spring to the northeast, in a square bounded by 13th, 14th, I, and K streets. Unfortunately, this spring was just seven blocks downstream from a night soil depository. This sewage dump would have been a breeding ground for two deadly bacteria, Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi, which caused typhoid and paratyphoid fever, also known as gastroenteritis. It seems likely that these bacteria found their way into the White House water supply and ultimately took the lives of these U.S. presidents.